This episode is brought to you by EFG Holding, a trailblazing financial institution with the Universal Bank in Egypt and the leading investment bank franchise in frontier and emerging markets. My show is very much about pivot points in life. And, and you've had some clear ones. You've had, you know, you started out doing physio, then you moved into exercise, burn, the launch of burn as a, as a pivot, um, the expansion. I mean, all of your, your business side is, is you've had lots of pivots. Um, in 2020, you had a major pivot, um, a very difficult pivot, um, which I was involved in. Um, and, um, it completely changed your outlook on absolutely everything. Uh, yeah. it changed how you wanted to live. It changed what you prioritized. Uh, it changed who you wanted to be around. Um, I want you to walk me through that, um, as much as you can. Ah, okay. If you're, um, if you're, if you're comfortable to do that. No, of course I am. Um, Prior to 2020 or during 2020, there was COVID. So I was reading a lot of books. I was doing my yoga teacher training. I was doing breath work. Somehow all these things got thrown into my, uh, onto my plate. I was just taking them, uh, batsella, basically. Uh, and I didn't know why, because they were so different than my usual intense exercises, but I didn't know why they were affecting me or why they were being presented to me, but I just took them and went with the flow. Summer of 2020, uh, we were, we were in Sehel for the summer and, uh, it was the last day of summer. Uh, we were driving back from Sehel. You and your kids were behind us in the car. Uh, my husband and myself and the children were buckled up. Uh, and we had a massive uh, accident where the car turned over. And I mean, uh, I went through something that I actually don't talk about much, but some kind of a near death experience, I guess. Uh, where I was out of my body, looking at my body. Um, I, everything was in slow motion. And all I remember is uh, something telling me, is this it? Is this really it? And then a huge white light. Uh, there was no pain. Everything was beautiful. And I was just floating and something, a voice said, go back, go back. And at that point, I opened my eyes and I was in the car, which was tilted on its side. And it took me a moment, but I, my children in the back and my husband were unconscious. And I was just trying to throw things at them to wake them up. And the first one who, who got up was Yasmina, who was uh, many eight years old at the time. And the first thing she, she said right was, uh, she was right behind me. The first thing she says was, is this life, mommy? Is this life? And at that point, I couldn't even address the question, but I just told her, push your sister, wake your sister up, wake your sister up. And I was doing the same with Ashraf. Uh, but now looking back, I was, uh, is this life from an eight year old? Like, what does that mean? That means that she probably went through something similar that, that I went through. And then, um, at that point when I figured that everyone was okay or alive in the car, I collapsed and you took over the show. I, I don't know how you managed to pull out my kids from the car with, with your two, two brave boys. Um, uh, but my life turned upside down from that point onwards, a complete shift. Yeah, it was a, I mean, my, my from my perspective, uh, you know, we, we were in the same, uh, uh, situ in same environment, but from different perspectives for me, um, I had never been in that situation before. Um, and, uh, I had specifically asked my husband to borrow his car that day to drive back with his car and not my car. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I really don't know why I asked him for that, but I did. 
And um, I think that's also a saving grace. There were lots of points when you look back and you think, okay, that 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 was a good thing, that helped, that was fine, you know. Um, but for me, it was until this day when I go drive long distances, I don't want anyone driving but me. Yeah. Um, I don't like being with anyone else in the car. Um, I don't like to be driven. Um, I, you know, I have a phobia now of being in the car from that moment. Um, and uh, it was, it was very much slow motion for me that, that moment as well. Um, see, you know, coming in and, and, and helping as, as we could. Um, it was, um, it, it was, it was traumatic, but in a very different way to what you guys went through, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can understand that for you, and I think for your husband, uh, it was a it was a game changer, and I can understand that um, uh, when you're confronted with that. And I think it was a game changer. I think partly because your mind was already open to other options, as you said, you had been reading other things, you had been exposing yourself to other things so you are receptive to it already yeah um so your your change of direction i think you know happened because you were receptive not not necessarily because of that that might have been the catalyst but i don't think that was the reason why you took you did that move you know yeah very very possible so i had i had several options after that First of all, my husband insisted that we, two weeks later, jump in the car, same positions, and drive the same route again. Um, it's like getting on a horse. Yeah. yeah. And if and you don't do it, if is, you hadn't done that, you would have had a massive, uh, you would have frozen about that, you know? Prior to that, my kids wouldn't get into a car in yeah. Cairo. They were, they were very yeah. like shocked and afraid. So we did that. We got into the car. We took the same drive. It was, uh, yeah, I was anxious the whole time. Um, but other than that, we also had to deal with a way of living or sort of, am I going to just pretend it never happened and move on? Or am I going to, what, what, what happened? Well, how am I going to shift? And, and what I like and to teach my kids because i always feel like the kids will learn most from what they see not just what they learn so how what am i doing and i assessed my whole life and realized um i wasn't living i was on a treadmill i was just working uh making sure they were fed uh that they went to school that they were healthy that they were all the check 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 you check were going boxes. through the motions you were going through the motions yeah 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 uh and i just decided that i just didn't want to live that way anymore i wanted to be present and i wanted to uh give my kids that gift i wanted every moment to count i wanted to have a meaningful life because life was about to be taken away from us so there it was like a big slap in the face uh and and thankfully i had the tools of breath work i had my meditation practice i had my yoga i had my exercise i had my beautiful children i had my friends around me i had my trainers we have all these tools around us but it's how if it's the way we choose are we going to use them or are we just going to like go on, have another drink, go out, stay up too late and keep going on the, in this cycle of just waiting to die, basically, uh, rather than and being alive a and awake. Effect also to, there's a numbing thing to, to what you describe about just going through the motions. You just do it because that's what you've always done without thinking, right? Whereas now you're yeah, stopping and you're saying, it, actually, no. Yeah, it's, it, we're, we're, we're trained to do that. So we wake up in the morning, we go to school or work, come back home. But the meaningful part of life, the the, the pauses, the, the stops. Yeah, yeah. The pauses are the moments where spirit comes in, where creativity comes in. That's where that stuff is, is born. And those pauses aren't accepted by a lot of people. People, I feel like I used to, uh, 
constantly be busy. I had to be somewhere, do something because being at home, chilling alone, staring at the paint on the ceiling isn't, isn't the right thing to do. But now I need those moments, my morning practice, my, my time alone, or even my time with my children without their friends and without my friends around. Those are sacred moments for me that, that I'd never uh, give up. Mm -hmm. I also and started I know, seeing the, the body and the, like my, the first, what we spoke about earlier was all about the physical. So I was, I what I was taught in school was the human body, anatomy. We have cells that create tissues and these tissues create organs. These organs come together, they make organ systems and the organ systems makes the organism, the human. And the, we have 12 systems in the body. It was all very scientific and just body, Bi body, body, yeah. Yeah. Biologi biology focused yeah. and very yeah. uh, evidence-based science. Like I have, everything has to be pr mm -hmm. proven uh, versus that was my, first model that I learned and that's my base and solid core but then now there's a new model so there's something else out there there's there's more than just the body there's the body there's the mind there's the soul and there's the the heart and that's mm, mm. basically what everyone is uh all like the, the new age people are are practicing and it's and it's the teachings that i learned had learned prior to my accident from yoga from breath work from meditation and it's the blend of blending the body and the mind uh, but, together but presumably i mean uh, before the revolution even though you were learning about it it probably felt a bit abstract it probably felt yeah. a bit uh, ethereal but now, after the accident, I'm sure you you got much more meaning out of what you were learning, right? It became much yeah. more real, more tangible, right? Yeah, yeah. It's no now. Everything is magical. Everything that comes like that I come across is a wow, and I want to learn, and I'm curious. Like I recently did this experiment uh, with. Um, lemons i was reading about this japanese uh scientist um uh, emoto i think his name was and he he was studying uh the the way you speak you can speak to water and change its energy and the, the crystals actually change and he studied this under a microscope our bodies like a lemon are made up of more than 60 percent water so the way we speak to ourselves can affect the way we actually look. And so my kids and I did this with, we did the lemon experiment. We put one lemon and surrounded it with a paper filled with, you're beautiful, you're so young, you, you're glowing today, blah, blah, blah. And the other one, uh, you're ugly, you're gonna get old, you're fat, like all these negative words around it. And throughout the day we'd walk around and we'd talk to the lemons. My staff was talking to the lemons, it was bizarre. Anyway, after about three weeks, we opened these papers and the lemon that was surrounded by all this energy of love and the words of like love and compassion hadn't aged. The lemon that was being spoken to in a negative manner had shriveled up it had browned up and had age spots on it so now and were they next to each other amina were they physically near each one, other one uh they were in so the big area of our house one was on one side of the room and the other yeah. one was on the other side of the room and this was to prove a point because i used to wake up yeah. in the morning and my kids would would see me looking in the mirror and looking like this and saying, Amina, you look beautiful. So my kids were like, she's just weird. Uh, it really does work. I believe yeah. that the way we speak to ourselves, the way we uh, treat ourselves, the music you listen to, the frequency of the music that you surround yourself with does affect how you age. Uh, I also was reading about um, a few years ago, actually about white hair. Some people get white hair, others don't get white hair. You can train yourself not to get white hair. 
I have yet to and dye my told me hair. That when I was 19. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got white hair at the age of 19. <laughs> Where were you uh, then? <laughs> I, I'm still working on it. But the power of yeah. belief. So, so this whole white hair thing is very interesting because uh, back in the day, why, why did people get white hair? It was to protect themselves. So the older people used to get white hair when they were being invaded by another tribe or or people coming in, but they wouldn't attack the wise people, the old people or the children. And they oh. differentiate between an old person or a young person yeah. by the color yeah. color of their hair. The we don't need we don't need that anymore. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. need we don't we are holding on to our ancestors survival skills and that's yeah that's yeah. the root that's the root of anxiety now like before the symptoms of anxiety your increased heart rate you're sweating uh that used to come to our ancestors when they were in danger so it was actually yeah, a protective fight or flight uh, syndrome exactly yeah. it's in your nervous system yeah. fight or flight that's going to protect you your blood flow is going to all go to your muscles so you can run fast away from the lion that's running after you we don't need that now um mm -hmm. we can let go of that i at burn and my instructors we put you in fight or flight mode so that when that fight or flight mode that anxiety kicks in in the outside world you can stop and you can say huh this is so similar to a, a workout but now i have a choice yeah. and i say that in class you have a choice you can stay here or you can just give up you always have a choice and the choice is always in your hands. It's like what Dr. Seuss said about you are the guy, you know where to go. You have your choice. You just have to choose. And now for you, I mean, uh, this, this, this way of living, it's infinite, right? I mean, you never stop learning. There's always more to do. There's always more to add to your life, right? Yeah. Is this something that in your mind, you see blending in with your work or is this something that you are doing for your own well-being your own path or is there something you see as a way to integrate with burn um i mean if it if it so happens that someone comes and asks me and that's how burn started right my friends started working out with me and then it turned into a business uh maybe this will be the the same this is something very untangible this i still need to connect all the dots because i've had yeah. so many teachers and one of actually the, the teacher i had a, i did a who am i course with dr abdul Hai last year and the yeah. first thing he said uh, at the beginning of the course i'll never forget he was like any anything i say that resonates with you or that is is uh correct i learned from one of my teachers anything i say that is not right or doesn't resonate from you then i apologize that comes from myself and that <laughs> for me really really stuck because it's so true my my whole life i've been learning from these amazing human beings i've I've tracked down, I'm the kind of person who will read the book. I read like the whole neuroscience part. That wasn't me. That was about, that was John Ratey, a uh, professor in Harvard who I stalked and finally managed to get an email back from him. Um, Emily Fletcher, meditation, breathwork. I took a breathwork class with someone uh, called Richie Bostock in London with a close friend with Nuna. And after that session, I went to him. He's like, I don't train people. I'm like, no, you have to train me. And he gave me a training. So it's about finding those teachers who are going to shape your life. And somehow, I think my next step is how to blend all of this, the physical, the mind, yeah. the body, everything I, I, together. I think also, Amina, you know, you know this better than I do. The whole idea of, of well-being and meditation, especially, is you want to pay it forward, right? You want to uh, have as many people under your tent or in your tent with you to make it, to have the ripple effects go further and further afield, right? Isn't that the basis of meditation? That the more people who do it, the the better the entire world will be? I know that transcendental meditation, that's the thinking behind it. So the more uh, people yeah, that can... The more meditators there are. Uh, it, it's, yeah. it's, all about, it's all about the energy, I think. We are energetic yeah. beings and uh, 
the more, I mean, it could be meditation, but for some people, meditation is a workout. For some people, meditation is, uh, meditation could be so many other different things. Um, I'd love the whole world to be meditating and breathing and doing yoga and doing exercise. Uh, but there's also the side where you can't force things on people. It, it, no. you can provide it and, and they, they, whoever will resonate with you will come to you. And, and usually they those will come people, in their time. Yeah. They will come in their time and those people are the, the ones who need you most. I had a coach and I was telling him, I had a client come up to me and ask me to teach them about meditation and all that stuff, but I don't feel like, I feel like I'm still learning. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I felt imposter syndrome. He's like, that's so normal, but you can't say yeah. no. Someone came to you and asked for your for advice or yeah. for your help just go for it go with the flow and so that's how i'm but how i generally work. selfishly for me selfishly uh having been your student in 2004 when i was 2005 with when i was pregnant i'm selfishly asking you to bring it on board and <laughs> integrate integrate some of this into your into your work because yeah you know we're in an environment where the more um the more ways of finding calm and peace is essential. Um, yeah. Everyone's life is stressed and getting more stressed out. And, you know, like the other things that you've brought to the table, people didn't know they needed until it was there, right? So yeah. no, one, no one knew they wanted Pilates until you brought the machines. No one knew they wanted Versa until you brought the machines. So yeah, well, it, I, I, think, it, I think my... my my team are are those people who actually came to me and and were like i want to start training how like learning how to give burn yeah. classes yeah and uh and since they're so wonderful and fabulous and have outdone themselves i have the time now to sit and yeah. think about and sort of uh, create something that that uh that can work for everyone uh and yeah. everything has to be balanced i mean i'm not going to turn completely bo voodoo buddha but uh there there should be a way and i uh, that's what i'm exploring currently how to yeah. bring this in in a way that would be effective and beneficial for for yeah. egypt and for everyone for everyone amina thank you so much darling this was really interesting